Question and answer time, guys. How to manifest abundance, opportunity, community, soulmate in 5D. Right? Okay. So I have lists and lists and lists of questions that have come in from my website or from my email or from my own community. And so I decided to do a couple different parts, like part one, part two, and part three of the most common questions asked about how do I get to 5D? You know, what do I need to do? What do I need to be? What do I need to think? And I know that you're getting bombarded with a ton of information about the Ascension and 5D. And um, if you're asking some of these questions, then go ahead and join us. My name is Jessica Alstrom. I have a community and an online virtual academy called The Quantum Method. I am the creator of the Quantum Fitness Biohacking course and studios and the creator of the Alchemist Apothecary. And those are going to be literal facilities all around the world that deal in the medicine of the past, present, future. So if you are new to my community or new to my page and you like what you hear, go ahead and subscribe to this video. But this is just my little gift for you since we are at the beginning of the year and I can't fit all these questions in during Second Sunday, which is my, uh, my energy broadcast. I thought I would just jump right in. Number one question that I get asked about how do I get to 5D or better yet, how can I create money or abundance the 5D way? Because as you're probably noticing that what you have done in 3D, if you went all the way to the corporate ladder in 3D, it is not working for you. Your old tactics, nothing is working the same if you have been doing your work, which means if you've been working on your shadow your self-development, your spiritual development, if you've been practicing at least 10% of what you teach, then you're probably noticing that the things that you used to do in survival, even in your own relationships, are not really working anymore. And I'm going to tell you why. Because in 5D, or the fifth dimension, which is a more expanded version of, of, of our ability to create through choice, right? And that's the, that's the secret ingredient there, choice. Where you don't feel like you have a choice is 3D. Well, where you start to feel the potential, well, that's more of the 5D energy, right? Just like your phone went from 3G to 4G to 5G, well, what are the capabilities? And so it's kind of the same way of understanding dimensions, all right? So how do I manifest money or abundance? Because again, who knows what money is going to look like truly when we get settled, it's going to probably look different, but the concept or the vibration will be the same. So the difference between 3D manifestation and 5D manifestation is 3D manifestation is about co-creating with something outside of you, like in the third dimension to create your wealth, your money, your paycheck. OK, which means that you were probably not all the way whole. And so you were being codependent on a job or a career or a man or a woman or something to have your money abundance given to you by exchanging time, energy, goods, services, which means it was a physical transaction. Third dimensional money is all about the physical time, physical transaction. It's a, a physical exchange of energy, all right? That's the way 3D is set up. It's the game of basically survival. So you are playing with only half of yourself. So you need something else in the virtual reality to, to help you, okay? It's a very codependent game and it's set up that way. Well, we've been playing in that game for a really long time. So now that we're getting kind of these coordinates from our intuition and from, you know, the sun and the solar flares and the phototonic energy and the sea and the ground, and we're starting to feel like, wait, this is changing, right? And and I'm not, and I've been playing this game for a while, even though I've been doing my spiritual development over here, but now it's not working. So any of you, some of you light workers, it's not working, okay? Those of you who are literally working for the light, it's not working. You're not, your clients are not showing up and you just created a whole new 5D package. Well, I'm going to tell you why. That is the number one question. It all has to do with co-creating as oneness with self, which means that every man and woman on the planet have both masculine and feminine energy. All right. So the third dimension is kind of your, is playing your masculine or your false feminine. OK, it's very masculine based. It's very real. It's very it's very much about stuff. It's very much about the realism of, of life. OK, and the feminine energy is all about the feeling. 
it's all about that that idea of it. It's the imagination. It's the visualization. It's the kind of the blueprint. It's the concepts. And and what real feminine energy is is desire. It is desire. It is the the I would like to demonstrate that which I that I that I know that I am. When you are energy and you become a body, the first thing you want to do is make those desires into form. Okay. So feminine energy is all about the desire. So even if you're in a man's body or you're a man and a woman in a body, whatever, you're still going to have desire, but feminine energy that is in its dominance is going to desire differently than a masculine dominant with a feminine accent, like a, a kind of like my brain is 60% feminine and 40% masculine when it's in its healthy rhythm as as my gender is presenting itself, okay? Now, it could be different on the inside. I could be leading more with a masculine and that's your number one clue if you're not able to manifest money or abundance or your new, you know, your new plot of land in 5D, you might want to look if you're in a woman's body Right. Or if you're if you're feeling like you are feminine and your nature, but things are not working out, you might want to look and see if you are are leading more in that masculine way. I've done videos on this a lot lately because it's kind of a 911 call, guys, especially light workers who have been giving service and service and service and service and service for years. And then they're like, where's the money? Like it was flowing for a while. Right. And I'm scared. I'm trying to get over there. Well, you don't get over there by taking that bag of money or that last paycheck with you. You get over there by literally lightening up and letting go of any attachments that you have, that you have to create outside of you for any part of your worth, okay? So divine feminine energy is all about magnetism, okay? A true divine feminine goddess could literally never leave her house. She would desire her masculine energy, which would act as that provider, protector, fixer, fixer, fixer builder, would create a, a inspired action telepathically that would draw forth to her that which she chooses to, visit, to, to experience, okay, in her true essence. And this is probably why we were burned on the stake, all right? Now, a masculine in his true, true space would feel the desire of feminine and it would turn him on. And therefore, he would create and build out of that desire because her desire is to experience time and space and, and form. And so in his natural space, he would take that desire and build. So kind of like look at the idea of, of the idea of a currency or like money, even though it's a masculine paper, the idea is the feeling. It gives you freedom. So that is feminine drawing for. Now, what you do with your money, so say you get $1,000 feminine, you manifest $1,000. If you have a healthy masculine energy that is co-creating with you, you're not going to necessarily put that $1,000 in a bank and let them build it. You would be working with your own masculine energy and that masculine energy would know how to build $1,000 into a legacy for you when you are co-creating right here. Now, when you're co-creating right there, this guy gets 10%, this guy gets 10%, and then you got nothing to build with, okay? And that's the way the game is set up over there. Third dimension is the game of co-creating with self and mirrored self consciousness. And it's all about finding your way back into yourself. So here is the, the good news. And here is the scary news for those of you who are asking me these questions. The good news is that you don't need anything. You don't need anything but all of you. You have to have your feminine energy in its natural, true magnetism, okay? And your masculine energy needs to be in alignment with your own desires, which means that your conscious desire cannot be different than your subconscious programming or all of the memories of trauma of you never having what you want and what's the point and it's not worth it. And so you're desiring freedom, but it's coming from a depressed subconscious, right? So you could think of your conscious as your feminine desire and your subconscious as in 
how is that action going to be motivated based on what has happened before? So you see why most of your favorite gurus or teachers or, or mentors this year have been like trauma, 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 trauma. And the reason why is because you have to lighten up. You have to be in your natural factory settings as a human being, right? Instead of a human doing, which means you can't be carrying a ton of dense memories and trauma and baggage in your body because that is going to weigh down the masculine ability to take action, listen to inspired action, receive the coordinates of desire and feel worthy, okay? So it's really gonna come down to in a feminine energy is the health of her womb, okay? And in masculine, the health, the health of his ability to be able to create and build and, and lead. So how healthy of a leader he feels within can he lead that desire? Can he build that desire? Can he, is he allowed? Does he have freedom? So if your masculine energy has been abused or mistreated or thrown in a cage or you like, uh, like rejected, then that's going to be what is dominant in your subconscious as far as your ability to be motivated, take action. It's going to be your level of fear. And it's also going to be your level of courage, okay? The health of your own masculine is going to be based around your fears, your courage, your ability to lead, and your ability to take desire and, and take that in your own intuition and know how to take a desire and build something bigger with it, okay? So when I say womb, I mean the energetic like organ of that because your your womb ladies is connected to your vagus nerve which is connected to your sacrum and if you understand that under a microscope your sacrum looks a lot like your yoni energy because as above is below so this is where you can't speak your truth and this is where you're holding all of the shadow of the repression of your truth as a magnetic feminine creator, which means that feminine desires and has worth. The secret, secret to manifesting with your divine feminine magnetism is you owning your worth, okay? And your ability to know your worth is going to be how well your masculine is turned on. Because think about it, guys, if you've dated a woman, you don't marry the ones that, that, that don't know their worth, okay? Because you can take advantage of that. But the ones who truly, truly keep you on your toes and inspire you and have value are the ones that you could see investing in a lifetime, all right? So a woman in her value is, is pretty valuable, okay? And it's all about how we see ourselves. Because it isn't about what you've done or what letters are after your, your name or, you know, what you have done for humanity or any of that. You could have been a, a truly shitty person back in the day before you woke up, but really worked the last couple of years on your self-worth. And you could be sitting pretty in your 5D, you know, empire in, in the coming months. Okay. Because it's literally going to be that fast. Or you could be a light worker who's literally like giving, 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 and you feel the sense of urgency, like you gotta hurry up, you gotta get the 5D, but you're only as good as you're giving and you're tired. So now how are you gonna get there if you haven't worked? So it's all about the feminine magnetism and her worth is basically the engine. So the, the, the strength of your magnet comes from your worth. Okay. And just like a man, a, a man knows his value, right? He knows what he's worth. He's going to be able to produce a lot more because he is his own motivation. All right. So your worth is going to be number one, as far as your treasure, your toolbox, your abundance, the economic that you're able to create in the fifth dimension has everything to do with your worth. So let's check in on your worth before we get to the next question. 
And the question goes like this, because I've been asking some of my clients this and it's been like a showstopper. So I thought, why not just ask you guys on YouTube? Okay, so, so first of all, close your eyes, regardless if you're a man or woman, and, and think about an image, let your subconscious take you to an image of a man or a woman, let's do a woman first, of what a woman who is in her worth looks like, okay? What does a worthy woman look like? And this is a, a like just a image from your subconscious, okay? It's not like, it's gonna be different for everybody. Okay, good. Now, in your, in your subconscious, what is an image of a worthy man or a man that owns his worth, okay? Because again, this is a subconscious. We really need to talk to it here. And when you use your imagination to ask questions or look within, you're in a state of quantum hypnosis. So you're going to be needing this a lot this year, right? Good. Now you've got the image of in your subconscious what you saw as a worthy man or a man in his worth. Okay. And now look at a woman for what you know you you define your subconscious is her worth. Good. Now put yourself as far as how you see yourself next to that image how far is the bridge are you this close to her are you this close to him are you like when you put yourself up against a worthy man and it's your definition of worth and you'll also find some trauma there right because third dimensional worth is not 5d worth. it isn't what you've done it's who you are okay so what is that how far away is that for you are you far away from that image of yourself, when you look at yourself right now in this state of being, you know, maybe giving hours of service and not being able to pay your bills right now, or not able to heal a health issue that's been going on for a long time, or not being seen or heard, right? You fill in the gaps. Your 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 distance between what you and how you see yourself and how you see that image is your work right now. That's your work this year is to close that gap. Okay, both in the feminine and masculine. And I want you to put yourself, and again, this is not like, haha, this is more of like, hey, we need to get real here. And this is what your subconscious actually thinks about you. Okay, so your subconscious has been program programmed by the matrix or the third dimensional reality. So it's not true either. Okay, but I'm saying your belief systems that are chronically practiced in law of attraction are going to be your dominant frequency. They're going to be your dominant vibration. Your vibration for 5D money is your worth, right? And you want to close the gap. So you're thinking, how do I do that, right? Okay, so I'm going to tell you. That's another question. So closing the gap. Another way to really dig deeper into the shadow for you is for you to say, okay, I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to think of the three people that are closest to me. Let's go five because that will give you some a little of, of associates maybe. And go into each person as if you know them and ask the question, what am I worth to them? What is my worth if I was going to look at what I think they think I am? What is my worth to my kids? What is my worth to my partner? What am I worth? Right? On a scale from one to 10, 10 being worth like the bounty. What do you believe that you're worth to your partner? What do you believe that you're worth to your kids? What do you believe you're worth to your clients? What do you believe you are are worth to your work, okay? And, or your parents or whatever. Let your subconscious, not your ego that wants to chime in, give you that number, okay? Last question. Close your eyes, right? And think about what you think your worth is to them. Like, what do you think your worth is to your kids? What do you think that your worth is to your partner? What do you think your worth is really to your clients? Because especially light workers and sensitives and empaths, you guys have the hardest time charging for what you're worth because you don't know, right? And so you're like, well, let's start here. And then as you kind of like start to get more confident, right? And you start to know who you are, well, then you feel safer charging more. But you have to understand something in the third dimensional reality, the more something costs, the more valuable it is. Okay. So the next question is, well, how do I get my magnetic feminism to manifest without having to work? How do I do that? Well, worth is the number one thing. 
And what would someone who has worth naturally have? Boundaries. Okay, now you heard this a lot. And the first thing you think is, is like protection and pushing people away. Walls are not boundaries. And I'll give you an example. In the third dimension, let's say you manifest your dream car. OK, or your dream house, ladies, whatever it is that is like kind of like on your vision board right now or your dream business, whatever, or your dream body, whatever, whatever's on your vision board right now. What you believe is something that is very valuable to you. OK, there's that worth and value again. It's all your finance words. What is truly valuable to you right now? If you get your dream house, ladies. You're not going to build a wall around it so you can't get out and no one can get in. That's a wall. A boundary is you might put a gate around it so people aren't just driving up. Okay, guys, if it's your dream car, you're not going to build a wall around it so that you can't move, drive it out of the garage and, and nobody can see it because what's the point of that, right? So the difference between a wall and a boundary is the worth, okay? See, what happens is I gave you guys a video called the seven stages of manipulation. And that has been what has destroyed your worth. It isn't been that you haven't been able to make enough money. Not at all. Because children are think they're pretty much a, a shiz and they don't contribute much. So it's more about manipulation that has destroyed your worth so much more than what you have done or haven't done. Okay, in physical reality. It's all about how you see yourself based on your storage and backpack of shame and guilt, resentment and humiliation and fear you're carrying around, okay? So walls are created from abuse, neglect, from manipulation, from, um, you know, humiliation, from fear, from loss. Walls are created from pain, okay? Boundaries are created from worth, right? So when something is worth something, like if I have a brand new car, which I do, right? Even when the gas prices were ridiculous, I still put the good gas in. And maybe it was a placebo, who knows? But to me, I still valued my car, even though the gas prices were ridiculous, scare tactic, right? Because that was my agreement when I got that car is that I would take care of it the way that it wanted to be taken care of. All right. It's also in a garage because the paint job's a little bit more expensive. Okay. So now if I have an old beat up car, which I used to have as a single mom, like I didn't even lock it. <laughs> so I take it, you know, like, and that's the idea of like walls, right. And boundaries when you have natural boundaries, it is because it's worth it to you, okay? So ladies, when we have been manipulated and our worth is lowered, that is what has destroyed our boundaries, energetic boundaries and physical boundaries. The ability to say, no, thank you without an explanation, right? The ability to say, you know, I've been helping you for weeks and I'm not getting any exchange of energy here. So I'm no longer your free life coach, right? That takes self-worth because when we don't think that we're worth it we believe that the only worth we have is to give and give and give of our junky car right just anybody can use it here okay and that has happened over a lifetime of manipulating energy tossed at your sensitive nature OK, so it's not necessarily your fault, but it is your job now to take awareness of that and really work with that energy. So number one way to manifest in 5D is to have your worthiness around your own desires. So men, that creates a magnetism in you. OK, and I would say that women who are in their masculine, which means their worth is very low and feel like they have to produce a lot. Um, a woman in her masculine is a hard worker. OK, she's a go getter. She is, you know, taking care of everyone. And she is she has a lot of value by what she can contribute physically. OK, now I would have called myself even six months ago an alpha female and I would have been like, good job, Jess. But that's a wounded feminine because feminine energy's worth is so high that it is naturally in alignment with true leadership and submission. 
right? Like if, if Prince Charming literally showed up with a glass slipper, you might submit, strong lady, if you were safe in his energy, if he valued you, if he saw you, if he heard you, if he cared for you, if your tears meant anything to him, then you might go, good, I don't want to work so hard. And the older women get, the more tired and exhausted we get and the less we want to do, okay? We want, and the, the coordinates of that goddess energy start really coming in. That's why our prime of our sexuality is our late 30s and 40s. Yeah, that's right, guys. Okay, so it's like you have to understand that that worth, intuitive worth is coming through in those ages. And it's not about your biological clock. It's about you, your ego kind of getting exhausted, fighting the good fight and playing with the big boys and, you know, having a bigger penis than some guys that you work with, right? Metaphorically, it's all about your ability to have so much self-worth that that creates healthy boundaries. And because you have healthy boundaries, you don't entertain lower vibrational people. You don't manifest clients that are going to not pay you. You're not going to manifest uh, situations that are going to constantly lower your worth. So your worth is going to attract what people think you are worth. Okay. Now, if you have walls, when you have walls, see, you think that you're keeping bad people out. You think you're keeping bad behavior out. You think that the walls around your heart and the walls around your truth and the walls around your womb are protecting you. But see, here's the thing. The only way that you truly manifest on this planet is through vibration. And so if you have a wall that is keeping things out, you are also keeping a wall from things getting in. So how many miracles how much abundance, how much money, how much opportunity, how much, uh, how many Prince Charmings have literally tried to knock on your wall, right? But because there's a wall, okay, you can't hear it. So you don't believe it. You don't even think God's listening to you. Now, ultimately, there is something that we use in accordance to law of attraction. And not a lot of people understand this, but it's called law of resistance. And when you build a wall around yourself, you're resisting like the past recreating, which means that when you build a wall, you're in protection and you are in defense naturally. That's going to be your subconscious thought. You're going to be naturally like anticipating danger, even if you're not thinking about it. You could be like, oh, I'm not worried but your body could be. If you have walls around those energies, if you're not manifesting miracles, you have walls because all you are is abundance and freedom. So if you have walls, law of attraction says like attracts like and what you resist, you get. So when you have walls, this is when you manifest your twin flame or your karmic relationships that feel like crazy passion. Because guess what? If I have walls, I'm going to manifest someone with walls. If I have walls, I'm going to make, I'm going to manifest clients with walls. If I have walls, I'm going to manifest like banks with walls up, which means I'm going to manifest my, my like attracts like defending and protecting themselves. Even if it doesn't feel like that. Okay. Oh, you're the perfect business partner. Three months later, we're hitting each other's walls. If you're getting triggered, someone's knocking into a wall, right? A boundary might, my boundary might, no thank you, might trigger your wall because you feel like you have to defend and protect your worth because I said no, but that's your wall, okay? So the number one thing that I'm doing with women this year is to create a healthy masculine boundary operator so we can tear walls down because you don't need to go and find your magnetism. It's hidden in your yoni. It's hidden in your womb. I don't care if you've had menopause. It's still there. Okay. And it is all you need. Now, when your masculine and your feminine are in alignment, desire and action. Okay working in harmony, very seductive, turning each other on, so excited about the potential of what we're creating here. We're both on the same page. The budget's the same. Time is the same. 
that is when your pineal gland goes ding, 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 ding. And now not only are you a magnetic force of whatever earth plane you're dealing with or dimension, but you also have cosmic and earth abilities to manifest, which starts turning you into the super human version of yourself. So first you'll become a magnetic feminine energy manifester or a true masculine leader, okay? And from that practice in 5D of that co-creating and building a whole new world and lightening up the density in your body, the superhuman DNA starts to activate within you. And this is what I've been doing for two years with quantum fitness, okay? Because we're getting the healthy masculine within you by getting the density out of your body, which naturally increases your worth. Matter of fact, if I was gonna help you unlearn everything you needed to learn or everything you've experienced, your natural state of being would be energetically joy because of your worth. When you are in the most joyful places, you are not judging your worth, okay? You're not like, I'm stupid or I don't have enough. So those two energies, okay? Now, someone who is naturally in their worth is also naturally grateful. So grateful is like how well you take care of the valuable thing you have. If you have a brand new home, you're gonna be super grateful for it. You're gonna take excellent care of it. It's going to be valuable. Think about it. When someone disrespects you or manipulates you, they are devaluing you. And so what you try to do is increase your value, go back to school, get smarter, do more laundry, help them more, right? Give them more sex, whatever, to increase your value in your own mind so that you can feel good about yourself with someone who is devaluing you and the reason why they're devaluing you is because you have walls, not boundaries. So this is the biggest like misconception in spirituality is that, you know, the walls are, oh, I'm, I'm empathetic and I'm feeling everybody's feels. It's kind of like non-duality. The more you can feel other people's things, the more walls you have because you're keeping your field misaligned. Your field is your natural force field. And when you are in your magnetic stream of that torus of your heart and your brain and your gut, that is a natural insect repeller, okay? But if your worth gets broken down because you are held together here by what you believe, your field will decrease. And so you naturally build walls, cynicism, pessimism, um, you're critical or judgmental. These are all walls, okay? fear of the unknown, fear of uncertainty. These are walls, okay? Um, being very hard on your own looks, walls. Not sharing or oversharing is actually a form of a wall. Like if I overshare, you, it'll be kind of the art of distraction, but it's actually coming from a wall. Now, what builds walls? Wounds. All walls are built out of unprocessed trauma and wounds. So I hopefully this is making sense, light workers, why you're not able to create the abundance that you know that you worked for. You've been working for God. Where's your paycheck, right? Or sensitive people or people who have been in service for a really long time. Like you're like, hey, I thought this was going to get easier, not harder. Well, I will tell you that this is the most simple, basic, intuitive, primal ability you have to manifest, okay? But it has been covered up in walls and there hasn't been enough boundaries because your worth has been devalued by the collective society. Your magnetism has been shut down and hidden because you don't want to attract bad things. And if you're not brave, well, that will also keep you from attracting good things. It keeps you separate from yourself. It keeps your masculine and feminine at war with each other. It destroys your physical relationships and causes you to create more manipulating relationships, more bad partnerships. And instead of co-creating and expanding and building an empire or a legacy, which is what's in your heart, you're building or putting out fires from what just burnt down.
or you're starting over, which we've gotten really good at, okay? And I don't think anybody wants to do that anymore. So ladies, if you are interested in truly creating that partnership in 5D that is expansive, win-win, right? It's like multiplication of growth versus subtraction of your freedom and time, then you're going to have to repair your, your self-worth to get your magnetism, okay? Now, the more worthy you feel, the more magnetic you are. Now you think, well, if I could, if I could attract something, then I would feel worthy. It don't work that way, and you know that by now. You got to feel the worth, and so all you have to do is tear the walls down and create hella boundaries. Your boundaries is your masculine protecting you until your Prince Charming shows up, which you won't need because it'll be more like an equal. Okay, you won't need someone to save you when you have fully remembered how to manifest with just your amazing, amazing biocomputer. That's it. Okay, so very important. Your womb has to be clear of trauma, ladies. Okay, your value up. All right. If your personal safety is coming from someplace in 3D, like a paycheck, and you're asking to go to 5D, brace yourself because your higher self will remove the job for you so that you can get your worth from being at a zero point or that dark night of the soul that will definitely get you back to worth because any zero point, anything that's going to totally disconstruct your belief system is going to take you back to, I am worth it, damn it. And I was too good for that guy. Okay. So Everything is working in divine order and the path of least resistance. So the more you hold on to 3D, the more 3D is going to be taken away from you, like a pacifier that's like six years old, come on, from your higher self this year. So it can return you to your zero point state so that you can remember yourself. And because you won't have money or support or help or a job, you'll start having to manifest from an intuitive guidance system. And then all of a sudden your work is going to return. I hope that I don't want that for you. I've experienced both sides. Okay. I've done it the hard way and I've done it the easy way. All right. So this is why I've been doing so much biohacking the last couple of years is because I'm helping people get the trauma out of their body. So the natural worth returns. And you know what? Your worth is like huge. And, and for the less you do, because it isn't about what you do in 5D, all right? You create the same abundance and economic structure in 5D as you're going to create a partnership for yourself, right? A business for yourself, a new home for yourself. If there was ever a time for a light worker to truly be able to visualize and manifest that dream home, it's now. Do not look at, do not look at real estate rates or how much money you have at the bank. You are an infinite supply of infinite power and energy. Your birth, like, like everything that is given to you, like what you are worth at birth is billions and billions and billions. And some people know that. Okay. And they're siphoning it. But you never subtract because you're literally, you are abundance. You are worth. You are wealth. You are health. The same way you're going to create infinite abundance in 5D is the way you're going to heal your body. Okay, same. Magnetism, what do you desire to create? Draw forth it, okay? And the boundaries to keep the bugs out. It's like having a beautiful day and having a screen door on, right? You're not keeping friends away. You're just keeping the bugs. And anybody who values their body is going to take better care of it. But if it's loaded up with trauma and it's somebody's punching bag and you kind of want to hide it because you don't want anybody looking at it, then it doesn't matter how much you help people in the third dimension to try to get them over to 5D, you won't come. And that sucks because you could literally be telling your clients all of these things and not doing it. And if that is, at one point, is it your turn? You know, I have clients who are, way more trained as healers than me. And yet they don't understand that it is also within their value to receive. Because when you do not have boundaries, you do not, you, you cannot receive correctly. It's filtered through your wounding. So someone could say, I love you. And if you have a wall up, it could be condescending. Like, no, you don't. How could you love this? Right? I've been hurt a million different ways. I'm worthless. 
I am worth less now. So this started in childhood, okay? What did you think your worth was around money growing up? What did you think your worth was around your relationship with your dad or your mom? That's where it started. You probably had a couple twin flames, maybe a narcissist and maybe a social sociopath thrown in the mix so that you could try to crash yourself down. See, you guys, the last question that I have time for is what is the difference between a twin flame, karmic relationship or a soulmate? And I will tell you that if you are asking for true unconditional love from a sovereign space of co-creating and building a huge life together, but you have a ton of shadow and a ton of walls up from past abuse, like I have all this baggage, but I'm waiting for Prince Charming, then what's going to manifest for you is a karmic twin flame or a karmic soulmate, okay? Karmic meaning cause and effect, all right? And these relationships are designed in the opposite attraction formula, which means one of you is going, you're part of the same family. That's why the chemistry and sex is amazing. But it's not a co-creative relationship. It's space to destroy. So your twin flame is going to be the most addictive thing that you've ever had probably in this world. Okay. You don't know why you can't quit them. They obsess over you and you obsess over them. And it's designed to wake one of you up that's slow on the go. And it's designed to crash one of you to the ground so that you can resurrect as the Phoenix. Okay. So if you are the mo more awakened partner in your twin flame relationship, your higher self is trying to get you to ground zero. So eventually you are going to exhaust yourself into a complete breakdown and your energy. So you can't be destroyed. So you're going to come back more fabulous and you'll come back with self-love and you won't let anyone treat you that way again. Lesson learned. And if you are the less awake one in the relationship, then your work is to get the seed planted from the awakened energy, whether it's masculine or feminine. And then you're, because you're, you're wanting to wake up. So by destroying her or his facade and helping them zero point, you're getting the seed to accelerate your own awakening. And so it's a co-creation. We decide before we incarnate, oh, I'm going to totally destroy you. And you're going to totally wake me up. Go power team, right? And it's going to be so addicting that we can't think about anything else unless it's until it's done. Okay. I know you've had this before, maybe two or three, depending on how well you learn your worth. Okay. And how fast you wake up. Now, when soulmate is when you are your soul's mate. You are co-creating masculine, feminine. No need. If you need, that implies lack. And there's a wall there. Because if there is ever a need for you with money or time or health, you have built a wall. Notice the universe hasn't forgot you. It just can't get past your wall. So you will manifest someone to help you tear the walls down, even if that's by destroying your own ego at the time. Walls crashing down, okay? And I'm asking, see me, hear me, love me, keep me safe, okay? So a soulmate would be when I come back and I become fully in my loving masculine and feminine. I'm desiring, I'm creating from a place of like, I want it, I get it, I have it. My personal care is top notch, meaning I'm caring about myself as much as I'm caring about others. And you will manifest your opposition in that way because opposites can create a whole even though you are 100% whole. So let's say by you move into your sovereign state of divine goddess, okay? Your excellent boundaries, you know your worth, you're creating everything you want for yourself, you're, you have friends, you have a, a strong feminine connection with other women, you're, you know, you're applauding other people for their success, you're living, you're grateful, okay, you're happy. You are gonna attract a man who says, let me add and build more of that for you. And she will say to him, let me inspire that within you. That's a soulmate, whether it's a man, woman, man, man, woman, woman, whatever. Okay. That is a soulmate. 
So if you're calling a psychic, spending $20 you don't have, going, is this dude my twin flame or soulmate? I guarantee, let me save you $20. It's a twin flame. And you have to see, are you the more aware one? And how much time before I flatline? And if you are like, this girl is like way above me, or this, this guy is way above me, then you're getting that seed planted. So you get to wake up more, which means know thyself more. Okay, that's all I have time for. Ladies, if you are ready to manifest from your own yoni, from your own womb, from your own magnetic ability to attract, truly, I have a workshop coming up. It's called Reclaiming the Divine Feminine, and it is followed by, optional, a retreat at the Blue Lagoon Iceland, which is the womb of planet Earth and the heart chakra. Okay, and we will be celebrating our divine magnetism there after our workshop. All of those, uh, that information is on my website, jessicaalstrom.com, reclaiming the divine feminine. Okay, divine masculine, I am working on a course for you. And you're like, I don't want to take it from a chick. Well, you know, like, again, I always like to get different perspectives. And I have been the witness of both sides of the awakened man and the sleep man. And so I do have the direct connect and I will be creating that uh, workshop for you guys as well. Reclaiming the true warrior, masculine artist lover. Okay. Whichever one you fall into. And because again, if you notice the Christ was embodied as a masculine, right? And he was the one who was the house of God. He was that working as the hand of God, the, the, the showing the way, the masculine was building the desire, the Christed consciousness around the world, the builder, protector, fixer, creator of divine feminine desire. Okay. So yes, that's coming for you guys. I also have my non-duality masterclass that I am teaching you guys how to take the fertilizer and the shiz that you're in and turn it into potential and power. Okay. And we also have, what else do we got? We got the apothecary opening in Kansas city. We have quantum fitness in Canada. We have quantum fitness in Spain. We have quantum fitness in um, Kansas city here where you can come get all your biohacking. And if you're like, I can't get there, but I need to biohack all this trauma. You can reach out to us and we have an online virtual biohacking at home program. And so if you like this video, share it, subscribe to us. We have more coming. I've got more teachers being trained, but I, I want for all of you that when you let go of the walls, you find your worth by doing nothing but being yourself. All right. See you all soon.